So earlier we said that we can transform data taking square of that or taking logarithm of that. One most commonly used transformation method is box Cox power transformation. And here is the formula for that, which says that y, let's put it very simple thing, y is equal to y to the power lambda minus 1 divided by lambda. This is what your transformation is. You take every value of y, take the lambda power of that, and what's lambda? Let's take an example when we said the square last time, when we said that y square, this power 2 is lambda. So whether this could be power 2, whether this could be power 1.5, 1.6, whatever works for your data, the software will decide. So what the software is going to do is, software will take number of random values. Random values such as lambda is equal to 1, lambda is equal to 1.1, lambda is equal to 1.2, and so on. And with these number of experiments, the software will tell you which lambda works better for your specific data. So what it's going to do is for each y or for each value, it's going to take y to the power lambda minus 1 divided by lambda. This is your box Cox power transformation formula. There is one exception to this. When software decides lambda is equal to 0, then it's not taking y to the power 0 minus 1 divided by 0. Because you can understand that anything divided by 0 becomes indeterminate. You cannot find anything. So what software will be doing is, if lambda is equal to 0, then this will be looking at your natural logarithm of the number. Things get confusing. Still, you don't need to worry because you don't need to do these things manually. And it's not possible to do these things manually or using calculator. You need to have a software for that. And what we are doing here is using Sigma Excel to perform this. We have a set of data. We will ask Sigma Excel software to find out what is the appropriate value of lambda for this particular data. And based on that, this is going to transform the data. And with that transformed data, we will find out the process capability. Let's do that using Sigma Excel. So here we are looking at doing box Cox transformation, power transformation. For that, let's open our non-normal data. So for that, I go to Sigma Excel, go to help and open the sample data here. Press yes. And my sample data is here, non-normal cycle time two. This is my data, which I need to transform to make it normal. We have learned about this earlier that this data is not normal. For that, we draw the histogram and we did the Anderson-Darling test as well. And we realized that this data is not a normal data. How do we transform this to normal using box Cox transformation? So let's go to Sigma Excel and then let's go to process capability here. So we have a process capability and we have a non-normal case here. Let's and that's what we are looking for. For non-normal thing, let's do the box Cox transformation and understand what transformation is done, what lambda value it decides to make the transformation. So let's press on box Cox transformation and let's select the entire data. Press next and select the cycle time. That's the only column we have. So let's select that. And what we say here is rounded lambda or optimal lambda. So optimal lambda might be 1.134 something or you could use the rounded lambda which is 1.1, 1.2, 1.3. So not going into too many values. Let's press on rounded lambda only. If after transformation also this data doesn't become normal, then forget about it. That uh, Then I don't need that transformation to be done. And that's what we have here in this box that do not store transformation data if lambda is equal to 1. And if lambda is equal to 1, that means that there's no transformation done. And second thing is we don't need this data if there is no way this data can be converted to normal. So that's what these two boxes are telling us. So let's keep it clicked. And with that, I press OK. So here I get my box Cox transformation. So once I see that data has been transformed, then I can see, okay, this data is now normal. The transformed data is normal. And what it has done is, as you can see that L and Y, L and Y means the natural log of Y has been put here. Okay. Now we were talking about lambda. What lambda value has been found out here? That you can see here. Software has looked at number of lambda values. 
and it found that somewhere near zero is the right lambda. And as we earlier said that something near zero, if lambda is equal to zero, then we take the natural logarithm of the data and that's what has been done here. Exact value of lambda is optimal value of lambda is minus 0 0.06. So that's something which you want to see here. So that's lambda and after transformation, whether after transformation our data is normal or not, that you can see here is which is Anderson Darling p value. p value is 0.4 and which is much much higher than 0 0.05 which was the requirement. So that we can see here this is greater than 0 0.05. So that means our transformed data which is here is normally distributed. So here we saw how to do box cox transformation but then what then how do i find out the process capability of this process because when you do transformation of data you have done the transformation of data but then your upper specification limit lower specification limits what about that that also needs to be transformed just like you all your other data so rather than going into all those details Let's use Sigma Excel here once again. So now how do we find out process capability here in this case? So what I do is I go back to my original data here. So here is my original data and now I go for process capability and I look for the non-normal because my data is non-normal here and I look for the process capability combination report individual non-normal and I select the entire data next. So here is my dialog box for non-normal data and the cycle time is the only one value here. I select that. What I have here is my upper lower specification limit and target value. So let's say if my upper specification and lower specification limits were upper was let's say 150. I hypothetically put that and lower specification limit was 50 and my target was 100. And I know my most of my values are above 150. So most of these things are failing here. But let's say this was my specification limits upper and lower. And what I'm doing here is I'm looking for box and cox transformation using the rounded lambda just like I did earlier. And I'm using box cox transformation. Just like box cox transformation you could have done Johnson transformation also. There's another way of doing that. We are not going into that detail. Let's stick with box cox transformation using rounded lambda exactly what we did earlier when we transformed our data. So with all this information now if I press OK here is my summary report here the, on the top I get the histogram which tells me that this data was not normal and at the bottom here I get the box and cox transformed data and after transformation it shows that everything is within these two limits uh, orange lines so that means the transformed data is normally distributed so that's fine and now here on the right I can look at 30 values and these three things which I put the upper specification lower specification limit and target this is something which I defined from the for the process and based on all these values this calculates the CP and CPK the CP came out to be 0.18 which is very low compared to 1 because what you are expecting is a CP value of 1. So if you see here CP this is less than 1 that means your process is not in control number of defects are there and if you see CPK which even shows the worst thing that this is in the minus because it is not centered so that is the reason it is giving CPK is equal to minus 0.3. And as we earlier said that upper specification limit and lower specification limit, these were transformed also. So these are the transformed value of upper and lower specification limit just like every other data was transformed. What sort of a performance you are expecting here? That you can see here. And in addition to all these CP, CPK, upper specification, lower specification limit, this gives you the plot of this data as well. So individual plot. So this completes our discussion on how to deal with non-normal data, how to find out the process capability. We talked about transformation, we talked about box cox transformation and we even said that there is another way of doing transformation which is Johnson transformation which we did not cover here.
So, this completes our discussion on non-normal data process capability. Thank you.